Good morning. Welcome to Flat Lake Baptist Church. Let's begin with singing hymn number 191, Jesus Saves. Remain standing for our prayer. I'll ask Brother Gary to lead us, please. Yeah, Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for this day that you give us. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of coming out and worshiping you. We just pray that Sunday is not the only day that we give you praise. Thank you. you. may be seated. In the way of announcements today, uh, next Sunday you have a guest speaker, Brother Alan Dodson's son, Alistair, student at Clear Creek, will be preaching for me. I'll be doing a revival meeting out at Lakeside Baptist, so be in prayer for that. Then the following Sunday, the 27th, we'll receive our Eliza Browdus offering for state missions and uh, continue to pray for our nation, for the pandemic situation worldwide. 
and uh, pray for these requests that are on the list. Also, Brother C. E. Jacobs, most of you know him. We got an email uh, or Facebook request to pray for him. He's got problems with the carotid artery and a lot of other uh, arterial problems, and so he needs our prayers. Any other prayer requests this morning? Myron Smith. Well, actually, the Smith family. Uh, they have leukemia as well. So they, they're fighting a lot of that. I keep spelling her name wrong. <laughs> can't, can't resist the temptation to. <laughs> Anyone else? Jerry's friend, I forgot what her name is, but she's having a stroke. I'll get her name later, so I know who it is. Friend of Jerry. Anyone else? Twilight's family, is it on there? Yeah, uh, well, no. It's not. The Tammy Pointer family, Twilight's sister in law, passed away. Freddie's, Freddie's wife. Anyone else? I'm sure you have unspoken today. Uh, we have birthdays. Let's see. Tomorrow, Bertha Taylor. She's not here, but uh, let's sing happy birthday to her. Maybe they'll take the... Uh, video to her and let her hear it. So let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday, God bless you. And I need to do my math. The 19th comes before next Sunday, yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> Joseph and, and, well, Joey next Saturday and then Joseph on the 21st. Uh, we can sing happy birthday again. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Okay, the uh, offering plates are in the back. We're not going to pass them today, but uh, uh, hopefully you've already put your offering in there. If not, you can do it on the way out. Our next hymn is Trust and Obey.
he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and
Those who might be watching and don't know, Limbo and Jim are family, so they didn't have to social distance. <laughs> Turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12. Matthew, chapter 12. Begin reading with verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. But, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, see, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swift, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. We know that just as that was a wicked generation in Jesus' day, we live in a wicked generation today. 
a society that has gotten farther and farther away from you. And Father, we pray that we as your people, we who claim the name of Jesus, we get closer and closer to you. That we would honor you in all that we say and do. That we would lift up your name, not only in praise, but in our actions, that we would bring honor to the name of Christ. Father, help us to be all that you would have us to be. Open our hearts to your word this morning. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The scribes and the Pharisees, certain of them, said to Jesus, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Jesus at one point told the crowds they were following him, not because of what he had to say, but because of the miracles that he was doing, the food that they got to eat. They looked for a Messiah, but they only focused on certain parts of what the Messiah was to bring. The Messiah was to bring prosperity. He was supposed to feed them, take care of them. They remembered the sayings of the days when Moses was leading them out of Egypt and they got to eat the manna. And uh, they wanted everything done for them. They wanted life easy. They wanted a sign. Your bulletins today uh, speaks about the uh, problem of gambling. And a lot of people today, even the government wants to get money <laughs> and not have to do anything for it. <laughs> and uh, just as uh, it tells you there, the biggest part of the money that comes in in gambling is from the poor people. Uh, the, the rich, most of them are smart enough only to spend what they can afford to on gambling. The, there's a temptation to want to uh, do things with money that you don't have to work for, money that you don't earn, and government has that problem too. But anyway, they said, we would see a sign from thee. Prove to us that you have the authority. Prove to us that you have the power. Now, he had done things before. <coughs> Excuse me. And they hadn't paid any attention to it. <coughs> they didn't want to admit it. Remember, Nicodemus says, we know, and he came from the leaders, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Because no man can do these miracles that you do except God were with him or God sent him. So it wasn't a question of what they knew. It was a question of what they were, were willing to admit and take a stand on. We as Christians know a whole lot more than we're willing to take a stand on. We don't stand up for Christ the way we should. We don't speak up for Him when we ought to speak up for Him. And we don't live for Him the way we ought to live for Him. So when we sing that song, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, we need to do it. But they said, send us a sign. Show us a sign. In other words, make us believe. Make us fall in line. Jesus didn't come to make us fall in line. When he created us, he could have made us robots. He didn't make us robots. Becky and I are not alike. <laughs> She'd like to go to Fazoli's a lot. Occasionally I take her, but I don't care that much for it. They quit making my sandwich the way I wanted it. We're all different. No two people are exactly alike. We're different. And we have the freedom of choice. We have the ability to like what we like. We have the ability to not like what we don't like. We even have the freedom to not try some things we don't want to try. <laughs> he didn't make us robots. But they wanted a sign. He says, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. But there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Now they hadn't seen part of this sign. The people of Nineveh hadn't seen part of it. 
they didn't know, or at least there's no mention of him telling them that he had just come out of the belly of a whale. <laughs> he just went to Nineveh and preached repent. For in 40 days, this city is going to be destroyed. Repent. And that was the message. John the Baptist had come preaching repentance. And many of the people looking forward to the coming of the Messiah and believing that John was the one promised the forerunner who would come before the Messiah. Many of the, the common people, the poor people, the less influential people came and were baptized with the baptism of John. Even soldiers asked, what must we do? And Jesus told them. But the scribes and the Pharisees, it was going to mess up their plan. It was going to mess up the status quo. And they didn't like the status quo being changed. They were the influential ones. They were the powerful ones. They were the ones the Roman government dealt with. And they didn't want that changed with a king coming along. Again, a wrong interpretation of what was going to happen. But they didn't want to believe in Jesus. But he says there's no sign going to be given but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Jonah preached repentance, none of it repented. And verse 40 is one verse that I cannot explain to you. He said, For as Jonah was in the uh, three days and nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. I don't get the three nights. Is there a conflict? No. Is there a lack of understanding on my part? Yes. One of these days I'll know when I get to heaven. I probably won't care to ask that question, but it would be answered if I asked it. God doesn't make any mistakes. His Word contains no errors. And if we don't understand it, it's our problem, not God's. God's Word is right. But he's referring to the fact, and I know some say that that was a saying, three days and three nights, and it didn't have to mean three full nights. But uh, I don't know if that's the case or not. But uh, anyway, it's right, whatever it is. <laughs> but he says, that's the sign. Here's your sign. <laughs> the preaching of repentance. If you don't want to repent, there's judgment to be had. And he says, the men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation. Why? Because they listened to the preaching of the prophet Jonah. They repented of their sins. And who were they? They were foreigners. They were aliens. They were Gentiles. They were no good according to the Jews. And yet God heard their prayer, responded to their repentance and to their fasting, and spared the city. And he said, the queen of the south, remember the queen of Sheba, <laughs> who came, she had heard about Solomon and his kingdom and his wisdom and his glory and his riches and all that. And when she got there, she said, the half has not been told. It's far greater than I'd been told, than I had imagined. But he says, the queen of the south shall rise up in judgment and condemn this generation because, <coughs> because she believed. And uh, a greater than Solomon is here. The son of God. And we say, boy, if we'd have been there, we would have done differently. If we'd have been there, we would have fallen in line with Jesus. We would have accepted Him. We would have believed Him. We wouldn't have denied Him. We wouldn't have betrayed Him. Would we? Human nature hasn't changed. And what do we have? We may not have the physical walking Jesus. What is it we've got? The Holy Spirit. The ever-present Holy Spirit. And how do we respond to that Holy Spirit? Is it like grandma's dishes that you get out when there's company coming and ignore them the rest of your life? 
too often it is. It ought to be an everyday thing for us, every moment of every day. He says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. There were unclean spirits back then. I believe there's unclean spirits now. We mentioned angels last week. I believe there are angels, but there's also unclean spirits. The devil is on the rampage, and he has his helpers. And uh, says, uh, when he's gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, findeth none, and he says, I'll go back to where I came from and see what it looks like. And he goes back, and he finds it's been swept and cleaned, but nobody else is living there. And so he says, he goes and gets seven more worse than he, and the latter state of that man is worse than the first. If we have kicked the devil out, we better make sure we got Jesus in. <laughs> we better make sure we got the Holy Spirit in there, living, dwelling, commanding, leading, and blessing us. Otherwise, we're going to be worse off than we were to start with. Now, it's a difficult parable or teaching, if you will, because we can't kick the devil out without the Holy Spirit, but it is a lesson to us that you've got to have something in its place. Because any time you've got an empty spot, something is going to fill that space. Pressure goes to the vacuum. And we don't want our lives to be a vacuum. We want it to be filled with the Spirit of God, filled with the teachings of God, filled with the blessings of God, and sharing those blessings with others. But if you don't believe that there is a penalty for sin, if you don't believe there is sin, and you don't believe there's a penalty to be paid, and if you don't believe it has been paid, here's your sign. Jesus died on the cross for your sins and for mine. He rose from the grave victorious over both sin and death. And He sent the Holy Spirit. And He tells us to be filled with the Spirit. He tells us to walk in the Spirit and not after the flesh. And the more we bring the Spirit in, we can push the flesh out. Paul talked about this battle between the flesh and the Spirit. But it's whichever one that we listen to and that we want that gets the upper hand. So we need to believe in God. We need to repent of our sins. We need to invite Jesus into our heart and into our lives. And we need to make sure that we keep Him there and that we listen to the Holy Spirit and that we honor Him and serve Him in all that we do. Let that be a sign to others also that Jesus is alive that he lives he lives in our hearts you ask me how I know he lives he lives within my heart let us pray our Heavenly Father we thank you for this day we thank you for this opportunity we thank you for the rain and for the sunshine father for the warm and for the cold for all those things that make our lives what they are we thank you, Father, that you love us enough to provide for the forgiveness of our sins and provide for us a home in heaven where we no longer have to fear death or sickness or any other problem. And Father, help us to realize that what we have is a gift to be shared. And Father, may your Holy Spirit so fill us so indwell us that we overflow that fountain of living water spreading out and blessing others. Whatever the need is in each heart here this morning, we ask that your will would be done. You love us. You'll take us as we are and you'll straighten us up from there. Help us to not think that we have to get everything straightened out first. We just have to bring it to you and be willing to let you straighten us out. So Father, take us and change us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is number 240, Just As I Am, as we stand.
this morning that you need to share? Everybody's just as good as they can be. <laughs> I appreciate our first responders. The, uh, they were gathered Friday, September the 11th down at the Hazmat Center for commemoration of those that gave their lives on 9-11 and uh, they continue to do so and we need to lift them up in prayer constantly and uh, Brinkley did a good job with the national anthem and uh, appreciate him helping us out here anything that you want to share Jerry's friend was named Lisa Wilson Lisa Wilson on the prayer list. Okay. Any anyone else you thought of? Not I'll ask Brother Jim if he would lead us in our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you blessed us with. Thank you for the opportunity we had this morning to come to your house to hear your message and to sing your praises. We want us request for prayer. We know each need better than we know what to ask for. Grant each request as, as you would see fit, Lord. <clears throat> as we leave this place, we ask that you bring us back again at the point in time. Forgive us from all our sins and our many failures. And thank you most of all for Jesus. We ask these things in his name. Amen. Amen.